So <clears throat> the question that, that we had is, uh, where did this innocent assassin specimen actually come from? And with that data, you would think that, that you could figure it out, and in a sense you can, uh, but this was back in the early 30s, and often the field notes were not that specific. They would go into an area, and sometimes a locality would encompass more than just one spot on the map, um, and that's the case here. Uh, if you look here, we can see here's Gearing, and, and the town of Scotts Bluff is just off the uh, image here. Um, Scotts Bluff, the bluff is here. Well, actually, it's over here. Um, here's the here's the North Platte, Bayard, Bridgeport's just off the map over this way, and, and actually there's something that I want to mention there a little bit later. But anyway, this long ridge is Wildcat Ridge. Down at this end, we have Jail Rock and, and uh, Courthouse Rock, and up here, this bright spot is Chimney Rock, okay? Just to, for anybody who's familiar uh, with these things. Now, most of Wildcat Ridge has a rickery exposed at the top and some White River uh, underneath it. Other places, the White River doesn't come up to the surface there. Now we're going to zoom in <clears throat> and, oh, I should say, point out one more thing. You see this road? This is called Reddington Gap, and it's a little gap in the ridge uh, where the road crosses, and you'll see that here. So this is Reddington Gap, here's the road, and this has best we can figure out is that MO109 locality, this whole area in here of exposures that are about the same age. This It's the Gehring, uh, which is a part of the Arikaree group. And um, this Swisher referred to, uh, there was a student at, at Lincoln, uh, Carl Swisher, who when he was doing his PhD, went out and did the stratigraphy and tried to relocate a lot of these old sites. And what he came up with was that this was his measured section. That is, this is where he took data, and this is another place, and he had these numbered. And both of these are within <coughs> that locality uh, where the innocent assassin's specimen came from. So it was somewhere in these hills. These light patches are the places where the rock is actually exposed. And when the South Party was in here, they would have been walking all over these hills looking for bone. And uh, um, someplace in here is where they found that skull. Um, <clears throat> this is actually uh, from Swisher's um, thesis, which is uh, in the 1970s, maybe, 80s. Um, I, I'd have to look up the. Um, but you can see that uh, this is the level that uh, that skull would have occurred at. I'm not saying it's this exact spot, but it's right in this level here, that, that uh, part of the rocks. And this is from uh, <clears throat> when Bing and I were out there. Uh, you can see that's the same locality. Um, here's from Swisher's uh, thesis, and he essentially says that Black Hanks Canyon, which is the name given to this locality, includes both of these locations here. Here's the other one. It's a big hill. Again, low down in this hill is where the uh, um, layer would, would be. Uh, and then if you're kind of interested in, in finding this place, this is from uh, the highway north of Wildcat Ridge. And, and this panorama encompasses all the way from Reddington Gap, which is this notch over here, the Chimney Rock, which is this little pinnacle here. But Black Hanks Canyon is actually right in this area here, and we'll zoom in more closely to see that. So here's Reddington Gap. Here's uh, Black Hanks Canyon from here to, uh, to here, I think, to here, right there. And then one more closer look. Okay, so this is it. From that, that's one of uh, Swisher's localities, and this is another. So all of this area in here, and you can see, you can almost trace this bright exposed rock all the way across here 
Um, that's right in the interval of the Arikaree where this specimen came from. So that's probably as close as, as we're ever going to be able to get that. Uh, while we were out there, we also looked for another site that is um, many sites out here inspired Isley's essays or poems. In this case, we're talking about the poem, The Innocent Assassins. But there's a, one of his essays is called um, uh, The Last Neanderthal. And it's based on a little experience that he had at a campsite that the South Party had made up this little wash. So here's uh, Bridgeport down here. And if you go north, uh, back up into the hills, there's a, a little, um, little valley. And they actually had fossil localities just, just up on top of the hill here and in the surrounding area, and probably worked out from there to uh, other locations. Um, this isn't the Rickery here, by the way. I think this is uh, Oluwala. Um, but anyway, as uh, best as we can figure, this is probably the location where they had their camp is up in this nice little uh, valley, uh, places the creek had been dammed up to, to create stock, uh, stock tanks. And uh, there are still some little ponds that are at least, they're there at least some of the year uh, where you can uh, see these things. So these are Isley's old stomping grounds the places where he got a lot of his uh, inspiration. Um, obviously, he had a talent for observation and for seeing more deeply into things before he uh, ever got involved with geology and paleontology. But when he did, he developed a lot of new tools for looking deeper into the past. And it, it became his scientific career as an anthropologist <clears throat> and then also led to the inspiration of a lot of his work. So uh, in, the mean, in, the, in the time since Isley, we found out a lot more details of the, the things that he was investigating. <clears throat> in fact, he didn't stick with the paleontology. As I said, he went on to anthropology. He was more interested in the, the human aspects of um, the ancient world. Um, but that's all I have, if anybody has 